But first, an experiment in rethinking public housing that encourages healthier living by changing the larger environment for residents. Jeffrey Brown reports from Denver. At age 71, Noelle Taylor says she's become more active and health conscious than ever before. Every year, I improve my diet, I improve my exercise. Her change in behavior didn't happen by accident. Four years ago, here in downtown Denver, Taylor joined an experiment in making healthy living part of the design and daily life of a public housing project. Among the amenities here, access to a garden plot. And I noticed all summer long I was getting healthier. The more of my own vegetables I was eating, the more energy I had, uh, it's made a huge difference. Well, so this sounds all too good to be true. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and there's more. The Denver Botanic Gardens hosts a farmer's market giving away free produce to residents. We're going to talk about how to shop healthy on a budget. Another group offers classes on healthy recipes and shopping. Okay. Now we'll take a blood pressure. In a clinic on the ground floor of one building, public health physicians scheduled regular visits to do routine checkups. There's a light rail stop, both for easy transportation and to get residents out of their cars. We'll do the other side now. Plus bike rentals and a nearby shop to teach kids how to maintain their bikes. Even the architecture and public art here was designed to encourage residents to get outside and take a walk. We really wanted this to look like a neighborhood, not a development. Ismael Guerrero, director of the Denver Housing Authority, says that 10 years ago this was a high crime neighborhood with 250 units of rundown public housing. Something had to be done. What we learned in early conversations with residents in particular was um, they didn't just want a new unit uh, to move into, they wanted a better quality of life. Um, and so we really started expanding our perspective on what were we trying to accomplish here. The result, completed earlier this summer, is the Mariposa development, a mixture of 800 apartments and townhomes, one-third public housing, a third subsidized, and a third rented at market value. The overall cost was $150 million. $60 million came from federal, state, and local government programs, with the rest coming through private investment. Already, Mariposa is becoming a model for rethinking public housing. Part of it is physical health, yeah. um, and part of it is uh, what we call neighborhood health, right? The, the, how healthy is the place? Is it safe? Um, are there healthy activities for you to do? Is there healthy food in the neighborhood for you to go and eat? Is it a healthy economy where people can get jobs and start a business? The Osage Cafe, located in one of the apartment buildings, is designed to meet some of those needs. In addition to the food, it provides culinary training and internships for young people in the neighborhood, like 20-year-old Israel Trejo. I think that's where I discovered I had a passion for cooking. What did it give you? It gave me the entire world, basically, like, with the skills that I've learned now, I could go anywhere. I could go be anything. Trejo now has a job at one of Denver's top restaurants and plans to operate his own food truck soon. Are you looking forward to helping me grow some fruits and vegetables? Angela Rodriguez, a single mother of two teens, dreams of one day buying her own home. She has a full-time job at a nearby community college, but Denver's booming housing market makes ownership difficult. She lives in a subsidized townhome at Mariposa, which she says is very different from the old-style project she grew up in nearby. Because the new style of public housing, it did take me a little bit of time for the adjustment. When new tenants, you know, are mingling with other tenants that come from different walks of life, you know, it's helping us to, you know, develop into new perspectives of modern living. Rodriguez uses public transportation, has taken up gardening, and has fully embraced the culture of health that is promoted here. But is Mariposa working? It's too early for definitive answers. According to a 2015 study by the Denver Public Health Department, about half the residents had participated in health-related activities over the previous three years. But the study also showed the amount of exercise residents pursued had changed little. Just over a third said they exercise five times a week, about the same amount said they exercise one to four times a week, and 26 percent said they rarely or never exercised.
Smoking rates decreased, but only slightly, from 30 percent of residents down to 24 percent. And these so-called active staircases designed with a bit of whimsy. A way to engage kids and actually now the adults enjoy it as To lure residents away from using the elevator. Well, so far, they're not having a big impact. We actually did observational counts where we sat there and we counted people who used the stairs versus people who used the elevator. And we compared this against a control staircase in the Mariposa uh, redevelopment, and we found absolutely no difference. Teresa Mikowitz, an epidemiologist with Denver Public Health, is overseeing a study of the development. And while major improvements in health remain to be seen, she believes something important is happening here, and she expects the numbers to reflect that soon. While maintaining my objectivity as an evaluator, do I think that there is value in this type of project? I would say yes. Individually, these components have been shown in the evidence in the literature to improve health outcomes. The city of Denver is so confident in this new model, it's about to embark on a similar development that will be three times larger than Mariposa. That construction is expected to begin next year. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown reporting from Denver.